This video is going to be on why Chainburn is a real deck. Um, I get a lot of people saying that Chainburn isn't a real deck, it's a degenerate deck, it's an illegitimate deck, um, and that applies not just to Chainburn, but to things like Dark World, or any sort of um, uh, mono-interactive kind of deck where the player uh, does a lot of things on their own. Just different win condition decks, to be honest. Um, people have a lot of problems with that. And they say the same sort of reasons, and you are all wrong. So, uh, they say that the deck is degenerate. Now, degenerate is a word that's thrown around a lot. Like, oh, this is this is degenerate. It's a degenerate strategy. Um, they are, I mean, I guess Chainbone would be degenerate in that you disregard card advantage in order to just burn the game or something like that. Um, even though card advantage is incredibly important to Chainbone because you have to balance the plus ones, things like card card D, accumulated fortune, reckless greed, have to time them perfectly. Counter countering with the fact that your burn cards are minus one, so you're constantly balancing the plus one minus ones aspects to the deck. But of course, it is it is degenerate because it it burns. I don't know. Um, look at the decks that exist in the meta. Things like dragons, uh, where you just go balls deep, filling the grave as quickly as possible to drop that soul charge. Light swans, where you go balls deep milling as quickly as you can to drop that JD Sylvans where you d reveal the top card of your deck and hope it's a plant I guess and then stack the top of your deck with the field spell to make sure that it is the plant all of which in doing so you accommodate yourself a soul charge like those those are all relatively degenerate in and of themselves especially something like Light Swan because card advantage aspect doesn't come into it you aren't you aren't grinding you aren't interacting with the opposing player you aren't you aren't really doing um anything too different from the chainman player or the dark world player because you you are just trying to establish what you are trying to do immediately by going uh recharge charge lumina gareth mill 20 or whatever set needle bug nest just as the the Chainman player is by going Jar, Legacy, Reckless, Accumulated Fortune into Burn cards or whatever they do, or the Dark World player going Dealings, Gate, etc. They they are just as degenerate as each other. Even something like Mermel, best deck at the moment, um, probably, I mean it just won Euros, um, where you uh, use the waters for various Mermel effects and Atlantean effects. It, it. How would how would you even define degenerate within this context? Because surely degenerate would be something that is is reductive, like I don't know, discard megalo and lead for megalo and don't search. That seems degenerate. Like I I, I don't know how you would define degenerate um, within this context. Um, and that like the way people use degenerate contextually leads to more of a comment on player interaction and that would chain money don't interact with the opposing player firstly this is very untrue and granted it isn't going to be like they attack you use dimensional prison kind of interaction in that what they do directly triggers what you do but what they do highly influences what you do you always have to think about what they're doing always you have to micromanage every decision so it's like is this the optimal time to flip trio is this the optimum uh is, is this the maximum amount of damage I can get for this burn card at this particular time? Should I save it? Should I wait to try and build the chains? Is this the best time for me to build this chain? Is this the best time for me to drop this <coughs> store card? The fader or the hustle rustle or whatever. All of that sort, sort of stuff. You do interact with the opposing player a lot. Like, can they summon this? Will this annoy me? Etc. Um, it isn't conventional interaction, but there is a lot of player interaction. You have to think about what they're going to do constantly. Constantly have to think about that stuff. And then, again, it isn't like most of the decks in the meta contain a large amount of player interaction. Look at something like Dragons and, <laughs> and Light Swans again. With the first turn, players where you just mill or draw, but drawing is effectively milling in Dragons, if you, you know weird weird sort of theory um just blare everything into the grave soul charge into a field like 
there's there's little player interaction there as well. Even in the later stages of the game, like choosing what exceed you're going to summon to counter their exceed is really the height of the interaction compared with um even even with Chainmon, you do have to think a lot about what you do. So I'm not saying that there's a vast amount of player interaction in Chainmon, but to 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 say that the deck is not real because there's limited player interaction, firstly when there are a lot of decks that don't have that much player interaction. I mean only things like Hat and arguably Gigia. The the Gigia mirror to be honest, because even if Gigia is just playing another deck, is just like another deck in that it's not too focused with what the opponent is doing to a large extent. Um, the plays will still generally be the same. You have to think about a few things, but not to such a large extent that it's like a goat mirror where everything is calculated depending on what the opponent is doing, etc. Um, like a game of magic or something like that. You want player interaction? Play magic for a bit. That is entirely player interaction. Once you have that sort of level, like, you can't go back to Yu-Gi-Oh! and criticize Chainman for having no player interaction. The game itself is limited in its player interaction, especially at the moment when people play very few reactive traps and things like that. When the format is as uh, as diverse as it is in terms of speed. It isn't a fast format, because fast formats do have a lot of interaction. Dragon format, Teledad format, things like that. So do slow formats. But this isn't a slow or a fast format, it's a spread out format, which means that it really is just I do what I do, you do what you do most of the time for the large majority of decks. Gigia, uh, Murmel, Dragons, Light Swan, uh, Sylvan's, Hat, although Hat do have interaction, so I left them out in my head for a reason, and uh, Bujin, etc. They're all very limited in their interaction, right? They aren't. Like, say, say, you could pair any of those two decks against each other, bar a mirror match, and there'll be very limited interaction. And, like, even with the mirror example, the chain by mirror is incredibly interactive. Incredibly interactive. So you can't say, like, oh, well, why are you, why, why are you not including mirrors? Because I could play a dragon mirror and there'd be loads of interaction. Yeah, but I could play a chain by mirror and there'll be vastly more interaction. Like, the chain by mirror is incredible in terms of interaction. It's, it's, it's messed up, right? But that's just... There's there, there's no interaction. Firstly, yes, there is interaction. Secondly, the game itself is limited in its interaction. The decks that exist at the moment are limited in, its, in interaction. You can't play Light Sworn and call Chamber and Degenerate. You can't play Light Sworn and say that Chamber and doesn't have any player interaction. And another thing is that people say, oh, the deck takes no skill. It's autopilot. The deck takes opious amounts of skill, firstly, in building the deck properly, because if you run a suboptimal card in Chainburn, it will show. It will show more than in most other decks, because that will end up, like, each card needs to be productive, otherwise you won't win. So if you run a card and it isn't productive, then you will lose. That's why in my build, I don't run anything that isn't chainable in terms of the traps. All of the traps are chainable. Because if I had a dimension wall or something like that, dimension wall can potentially be very powerful. If I have that set, and they... I, I flip various things, and then I don't flip that. They know that that probably is a dimension wall. Dimension wall is also the first thing, uh, second thing that they'll play around, because they'll play around Scarecrow the most. So, dimension wall is probably the second thing they'll play around. Which means that the times that I'll resolve it are limited. Has a very limited time window in terms of the point at which I can activate it. All these things factoring in. That's just for one card. So the process of building the deck adequately is in itself a struggle. Then there's playing it. Like you have to micromanage every decision individually to such a large extent. Again, you have to make sure every card is completely productive. You have to time everything perfectly. You have to micromanage incredibly well sure building the chains is relatively easy like once once you understand that you put trio later on in the chain link after deserts and uh secret barrels then yeah you are fine the building the chains really it, it does itself but even so 
it is the point at which you decide to use said chains. Everything is micromanaged to such a heavy extent that you can't just say it takes no skill. It takes a lot of skill to do that correctly. It takes a lot of skill. And then conversely, what 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 decks take an opious amount of skill at the moment in this format? Honestly, like Gear Gear doesn't take a huge amount of skill. Uh, hat, yeah, I love hat. Um, every, every deck is limited in its skill cap. So to criticize Chainbone for being limited in its skill cap, even though it isn't to anywhere near the the extent that people think it is. And then you say, oh no, but I'm 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 gonna keep playing dragons and lightsmon because they're 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 skillful deck. I summon JD, pay one thousand. It's so skillful. Like no, it 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 isn't, and it it is within its own way. But you can't say that X is skillful and Y is not when the two are the same, more or less. They just achieve the same end through different means. That's the thing. They're just achieving the same end through different means. So don't don't condemn it. The whole skill thing is nonsense, and the thing with Chainburn is that, the beauty of Chainburn is that it is so deep in terms of how it requires you to play, because the, 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 the surface level of it is just, you know, you build the deck, you flip, etc, burn, but the intricacy is in how you manage everything outside of the game itself, so time mainly, like, you have to, you have to keep track of time constantly, you have to think about everything, and no other deck demands that of you. No other deck demands that, um, <laughs> say, like, you just managed to waste time for 40 minutes. This is the true reason why people should dislike Chainmon, but at the same time, it is very interesting in itself, in that it is a strategy to utilize, it isn't cheating, to utilize... Um, the rules that are in place to your best advantage in order to just win 1-0 like to just play game 1 for 40 minutes and win or to wait until time knowing that your deck is superior in time things like that that's a very intricate layer to the deck that granted is not appealing to most people but at the same time exists and is beautiful in itself it's beautiful it's a beautiful aspect to the deck right but yeah, it's still it's still not a real deck because you can't summon can't summon an exceed monster. Like, come on, come off it. Those decks are legitimate. They are legitimate. They are just as viable as the deck that you are using right now. You right now, the deck that you're using, it's just as viable as Chainburn. And what I would say is, for those of you who hate it, condemn it, like Chainburn. Like, I don't like playing against Chainburn, obviously. No one likes playing against Chainburn. But the deck exists. There's no point in pussyfing around the subject. Like, I play Chainburn. Like, just learn how to beat it. Learn how to beat it, because it will exist. You assume it will exist for a while. Until Fortune goes to 1, which probably won't happen ever, the deck will continue to exist. And because it will continue to exist, just accept it. Just accept it. Like, the game isn't perfect. If you were looking for a perfect game, you wouldn't be playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Right? Yu-Gi-Oh! has many flaws. It's an inferior game to Magic in so many ways. Right? But we love it. But we don't love Chainburn. For some reason. Just accept it. Accept it's part of the game. Play the deck. Play Chainburn. Just... I'll do a deck profile. I'll put it up. Just copy my build and play that build. And learn how to play it. Because I can guarantee you will lose at first. You will lose a lot. And then you'll become good, and then you'll realize how the deck works. And then, you won't lose to it anymore, because you'll learn how to beat it. That is how it is. That's why I don't mind playing Chainburn anymore, because I know how the deck works. I know I know how the deck works better than they know how the deck works, so I won't lose, right? But that started with me being the same, like, oh, Chainburn isn't a real deck. It is a real deck, and stop saying it isn't a real deck, because you're wrong. It isn't degenerate, it has player interaction, and it does take skill. At least... None less so compared with decks that exist in the format like Light Swans and Dragons and stuff like that, which are themselves degenerate, don't have much play interaction, don't take much skill. Just under 15 minutes. Swag.